In this part, I'm going to run you through the code that we have in the final Godot Nakama demo. I'm going to run you through the Lua code. That's a bit more complex than what we wrote. And also talk a bit about how we communicate with the server and our authoritative match loop. First, let's talk about where that code comes into play. So it's after the login and after selecting a character. Once you enter the game world, you first spawn, it's going to be broadcasted to all clients and you can then move around. And this information gets sent to the server which updates your state and broadcasts it to other players 10 times per second. It tends to accumulate messages that you send via the socket API. So let's see first on the client side, how you send messages and then we'll see how they are processed on the server. So you join the game via the main menu. We have a function called join game world async that calls join world async on server connection. Remember, this is the final Godot Nakama demo that you can find on GitHub and not the tutorial version. So the code here to join the world is similar to what we had. Get a match ID through our get world ID IRPC. We ensure that it's fine and we store the world ID for the time that you are part of a certain level or match. We then try to join the match, ensure that everything is okay. And if it is, we store all the presences in an array. Until there, it's what we've done in the demo. Then we join the chat, which we will see in a future lesson. What's interesting is that from there, we use the socket API to send messages to the server once we've joined the match to update our position, for example. So let's move down a bit. So we have functions called, for example, send position update. We ensure that the socket object is there, is valid. So we have an active connection. We create a dictionary that we convert to JSON, right? So we call that the payload. It's the message that you send to the server. And then on the socket API, you have sent match state async. This allows you to send to a given match. That's why we have to store our world ID. Then we send an operation code. This is an integer that represents specific command or bit of information you want to get on the server. So we'll see that we have the same enum here on the client, but also on the server in a second. And then you pass your message. And this is what you get on the server through the message, let me see, world control dot match loop. The messages is a list of these messages that come in the form of a JSON dictionary with an operation code. I control click on opcodes to see where they are defined. They are defined at the top of our script. And so we have an enumeration called opcodes and it's just a list of update position is one, update input is two, state is three, etc. Note that our enum starts on one. That is because Nakama has custom codes that are equal to zero or have negative values. You can use all positive values above one. And so now if I go back to my server code, worldcontrol.lua, at the top, we have an array that defines the upcodes as well. So we say update position is one, update input is two, update state is three, etc. Now these opcodes map to functions. So we've decided to have a variable called commands and commands for each of these opcodes is going to map to a function. For example, updating the position is going to look at the positions in our state. Again, state being the matches state that you pass from function to function that we wrote in the previous part. And so we update it if it exists for a given user ID. In other words, opcodes map to functions or operations that you want to do on the server that entirely depend on your game, which is why we haven't written specific ones. They also add quite a bit of complexity to the teaching part. Now let's look at the specific of our uh, world control authoritative matchmaking loop. We have these opcodes that each of them is essentially going to update some data in our state field there. We have the same functions like world control dot match in it, world control dot match join attempt, match join, etc. that we wrote in the previous lesson. We just have a bit more data. So when we initialize the match, we not only have the presences, but we have a table of inputs, of positions, of jumps, etc. For each of them, we're going to store a player's ID 
and the corresponding inputs, position, uh, jump state, colors, etc. Match join attempt is about the same. What's important is match join. I wanted to touch on that because when a player joins a match in the state dictionary, in the state table, we initialize some values, the player's presence, positions, the inputs, colors, and names, and we feed it with dummy values. We just initialize some variables if you want, except these are key value pairs in a table. And we do that because when you join the match, you haven't spawned in the game world and say, depending on your team, you might spawn in different places or you might have entered the map through a different entrance. So at this point in match join, it's like a constructor in a sense. We initialize some data to ensure that all the keys we want to access later exist. In match leave, we then clean that data. You can see that we set everything back to nil. We remove the key value pairs and it's in match loop that we check for the opcodes. If you want, the messages is going to be a table or an array of messages, which we loop over. And for each of them, we look at the opcode and we decode the JSON that came, uh, the payload that we sent. For example, in what I showed you, I have to go back to send position update, where we send the update position opcode and the corresponding JSON payload, that information, the user ID and their position. So once we have that, we ensure that we have an existing command that corresponds to that opcode and we check the opcode. So we do a switch case statement, if you want, with ifs and elifs. If the opcode is spawn, then we spawn the player. So we set the spawn position and we send the information through the dispatcher. We broadcast a message. This is sending that information to one or more clients. And we say here where you spawn. It's the server that says where you spawn. Spawn position here being a constant in our game. It's not something dynamic. It's at the top of the script. Go back to the top and you can see we have some hard-coded values, uh, the spawn position, spawn height, and the width of our level here. Because it's a demo, because it's uh, limited in complexity. But uh, there you go. If the opcode is update color in the loop, we send your new color to all the other connected players, etc. This is how it works in a nutshell. And you can see the use of the dispatcher argument with its broadcast message function, which allows you to forward a piece of information that one client sends. So I've moved there, I've changed my color, and then the dispatcher sends it to the other players. And you have an example of match terminate that might be interesting as well. When we terminate the match, we save the information about the players. Could be anything, you could decide that you save analytics of the player, uh, how many persons they've killed, if they won or lost, uh, their MMR, uh, if you want to have a competitive multiplayer game, those sorts of things. And you can write them to the storage, which will be the topic of the next lesson. Let's talk about World RPC really briefly. So let me go there. You will see more functions that are related to adding and registering and removing character names from the server. So this is stored. Uh, this prevents players from picking a name for their character that is already taken by another. But besides that, getWorldID is the same kind of function we wrote in the minimal demo. We just have a pseudo private function that kind of encapsulates the getting the first world because later you might want to allow players to choose the world, but if it's their first match, you might want to send them to the tutorial area or something like that. So you can have a few functions for that and get first world is just like we did it in the demo. With that, this is a quick overview of that part of the code. I will leave some links below to the corresponding files that include code comments. And if you have questions, they are welcome. Please ask them in the comments below. With that, in the next part, we will look at storage. See you there.